Welcome. What we are going to do today is we are going to graph uh, protons versus neutrons for every element on the periodic table. We'll navigate to the website provided, highlight the table, down to 175, command C, copy it, go into our Excel workbook, top left, command V, paste it. It provides us lots of extra information. We only need atomic number and number of neutrons for graphing protons versus neutrons. Protons on the x-axis, uh, neutrons on the y-axis. So I'm going to highlight, select, and delete those out of the way. Furthermore, I'm going to go ahead and rename these protons and neutrons just for simplicity. One thing that you can notice, I'm going to uh, throw some borders on there, you don't need to, but you can, uh, is when you scroll down, you'll end up finding element number 105. There's going to be a slight problem with element number 105 because there is no number of neutrons listed. That's from the website. Um, I'm just going to leave it as is, but just notice that there is no number for element number 105. Now we need to graph it. The way we'll graph it, uh, for me, I need to click on Insert, Charts, and we're looking for a scatter graph, mark scatter. Select a data point. As typical with Excel, it'll automatically input data. Um, we need to change that. Remove whatever it automatically inputs, and then we're going to go ahead and add in our own information. Title this graph atomic structure. The x values, selecting, I'm going to highlight all the number of protons all the way up to element number 118. My y values in this case, I want as my number of neutrons. It doesn't matter which direction you highlight them, just highlight them. Once they're in, you should be able to click OK. OK. Now I have my graph. I'm going to start formatting it, but first I'm going to move it into its own sheet. Now my graph is laid out. However, I do not have titles. I'm going to add in titles right now. Um, under design or format, you should be able to find quick layouts. And we would like quick layout number nine. All right, quick layouts, layout number nine. It gives us some extra information like lots of grid lines, which I do not need. So I'm going to select those grid lines and press delete. I'm going to select the legend. I'm going to delete the legend as well. And now I'm going to immediately reformat my titles to be large. Increase the font size to say 36 for the main title. Um, perhaps 32 for the axis titles. And for the scales, I'm going to go slightly smaller, perhaps 24. In addition, I'm going to reduce the quantity of numbers displayed here. Two finger click, format axis. Change your minimum to be zero. Maximum can stay at 200. And then my major unit, I'm going to also change to be about 50. Forgot to change the size of my trend line. The trend line is present, but the equation is barely legible. So I'm going to increase the font of my trend line to 24 as well. So far, so good. It looks pretty decent. Um, I would like to get the scale of my y axis or my x axis rather a little bit larger. So I'm going to format that axis um, to 120. The largest element on the periodic table is 118, so 120 will take care of that issue. And then I will change my axis to every, mark every 40 units. Looking pretty good. We could, of course, insert some coloring in there if we would like, but this is um, basically what we needed to do.
our number of neutrons is here on the y-axis and protons is here on the x-axis. If you notice a little bit after 80 we have some interesting stuff going on. We have relatively consistent trend with slope of the graph and then after about 90 in that ballpark uh, interesting things start happening with the uh, number of protons and neutrons and we'll talk about that and how that affects stability of those atoms. That's all for now. Hopefully that was useful.